gone. He said, thou shall bruise the head of the serpent. He shall bruise thy heel. Satan is only permitted to bruise your heel. That's why it's dangerous to wear high heel. Satan, <laughs> Satan, the Bible says, shall bruise your heel. <laughs> Am I communicating here? Don't be offended. That was what finished and expired John the Baptist. The Bible says, and we have just read verse 10. And God, somebody say, and God. Say, and God. Say, and God. Say, and God. And God turned. And God turned. And God turned. And God turned. Let me tell four people your left and right. Only God can do it. If you must experience a mighty turnaround, you must know only God can do it. Only God can do it. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, there is no salvation in any other. For there is no other name given among men by which they can be saved. Only God can do it. He says in Job 42 and verse 2, I know that thou can do all things and nothing can be withholding from thee. He says in Hebrews chapter chapter 7 and verse 25 he said God is able to save to the uttermost them that come to God through him believing that he ever liveth to make intercession for them in Philippians 3 verse 21 he said God is able to subdue all things in Ephesians 3 verse 20 he said God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us he says in Daniel 3 verse 7 17. Our God is able to deliver us from this burning fiery furnace and to deliver us out of your hand. Hear me, child of God. Don't let the devil lie to you that there's an alternative elsewhere. Only God can do it. Are you looking for healing in your body? Only God can do it. Are you believing God for babies? Only God can do it. Are you believing God for promotion? Only God can do it. Are you believing God for long life? Only God can do it. Are you believing God for prosperity? Only God can do it. Don't let the devil lie to you. There is no power anywhere. There is no salvation anywhere. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Only God can do it. That devil is a liar. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God say yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down god is on your side power is on your side glory is on your side only god can do it you will come out of trouble only god can do it you will come out of disease only god can do it you will come out of setback only god can do it somebody shout fire 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 take your seat Hear me? Any or uh, listen, any alternative to God is an alternative to the worst. Any alternative to God is an alternative to the worst. Anything that's an alternative to God is an alternative to the worst. You must get to a point in your life where you say, anything God cannot do, let it remain undone. If God cannot bless me, may I stay like that? Anything God will not do, let it remain undone. Because anything that, anything that's suggestive, all of those people tell you that they go to herbalist, they got pregnant, they go to this, they got that, they go to this, they got that. That's, that's a satanic agenda. It's a spare from the devil. The devil cannot give you what won't give you trouble. You go to the devil for a child, he will give you his product. Every manufacturer gives you his product. And that's an extension. Am I communicating? Why is God angry? When God sees you worshipping idols, why is God offended? Why is God angry? Can I say this to you? 
God's jealousy is on the platform of his, on, of his omnipotence. God's jealousy is on the platform of his omnipotence. He is jealous because he is all powerful. He's on the platform of his omnipotence. He is all powerful, all potent God. So where are you going? Those that serve idols, Jeremiah 10 tells us, those that serve idols are like them. who serve them. The Bible says I like them. A generation of people, the Bible says in Romans 1 25, that are choosing to serve the creator, not the creator. They have chosen to serve. He said they change the truth of God into a lie. They worship and serve the creature. More than the creator. When the devil tells you that serving God is a problem. That was the, the situation Elijah got into and he called Ahab. He said, how long are we going to be between two opinions? Believers in God will go to the house of Baal. When they finish with Baal, they come to the temple of God. God hates alternative. He said, how long do we come between two opinions? If God is God, seven. If Baal is Baal, seven. If God is God, seven. If Baal is God, seven. How long? Do we stand between two opinions? And I need this to be a word that will run through your mind. Only God. And God turned. And God turned. Trust is the highest virtue. In our Christian journey. Trust. Is the highest virtue. Thank God for faith. Thank God for hope. Thank God for love. Thank God for all of these. But the highest virtue is trust. Because trust keeps holding on. Even when faith fails. Trust keeps holding on. Even when hope is questioned. Trust keeps holding on. Even when everything seems against you. Trust keeps holding on. On. Psalm 11 verse 1. Psalm chapter 16 verse 1 says trust in the Lord. Psalm chapter 20 verse 7 says some may trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 says trust in the Lord, lean on to your own understanding. But in all our ways, verse 6, acknowledge him, he shall direct your path. Psalm 125 and verse 1, they that trust in God shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. In Psalm Chapter 25, verse 2. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies. In Isaiah 26, verse 4, he said, Trust in the Lord, I trust in the Lord forever. Trust in the Lord forever. For in that God, Jehovah, is an everlasting strength. Your trust. What is trust? Trust, trust is loyalty, trust is dependability. Trust is resolve. Loyalty. Trust is absolute dependability. Trust is unwavering commitment. Trust is staggering, 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 staggering commitment, staggering addiction, staggering dedication. Trust is what, 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 what hits a man's spirit. And you say, even if God won't bless me, I'll remain like that. Even if my serving God is his calm, let it remain. Can I ask you a question? Somebody tells you that. Why are you serving God? There's nothing like hell. There's nothing like hell. Why are you a Christian? Why are you serving God? If you follow God and you found that there was nothing like, like hell, what did you lose? Okay, what if you, you don't follow him and you later find that there's hell? Am I communicating here? If you are serving God and somebody tells you there's no hell, serving God naturally makes you live a decent life. It makes you live a decent life. So what? Because if, 
if you are not even serving God because you want to go to heaven, serving God because of the wickedness of this world. A young man was, I was having a conversation with a young man and I needed to talk to him because I was, I'm doing a, currently doing a, a study on some things. So it's taking a lot of my attention. You know, when you are, if you've done your master's and you've done your PhD, you know what it means to do a research work. You are doing a research, so you have to scan and scan. So I'm doing a research on, on spirits, the operations of spirits. So I needed to talk to somebody, someone referred. And I called, I'm asking questions. Now, those of you who are from riverine areas need a lot of deliverance. If you are from place where they have river, I'm sorry, you need deliverance. Where there have a river there. That's the truth. That is why if you see people from those areas, you notice certain struggles in their life. If you don't see poverty, you see marital instability, or you see character instability. One time, Jesus said, watch this. Jesus said, Matthew 17, Peter walked in, and they confronted Peter and said, does your master pay tribute? And Peter said, yes, and came to Jesus, and Jesus stopped him from speaking. And Jesus said, go to the sea now. Peter could walk to the sea, meaning Peter was from a riverine area because Capernaum was Peter's city. So Peter was from the riverine area. And we see what happened in the life of Peter. You see Matthew 26, verse 72. The Bible says he swore that he has never met Jesus before. Instability, he swore. Marine, Marine, he swore. Instability. Galatians chapter 2, verse 11. Galatians chapter 2, verse 11, Paul had to confront Peter. Even as an apostle, as a servant of God, Peter was the dilly darling. When he see the Gentiles, he will eat with them. When he see the Jews, he will eat with them. Paul will stood him and say, which one are you? Are you a Jew or a Gentile? Don't blame Peter. What a spirit was manifested. It was the powers of the marine, the powers of the water world that was busy manifesting his life. So I was doing this series and I was asking this person a question. And he said to me, all of those people from Nigeria has got several rivers. They've got River Eti uh, Etiop, they've got River Benue, River Niger. All those men, if you ask contractors who walk around those areas, they will tell you practical stories. Contractors around River Benue, River Niger, they will tell you practical stories of how people drop into the sea when the sea is hungry. There was one who, who, said, who I spoke to, the one I spoke to said, he was part of those that fell into the sea. And if he went down, found himself in another world and he was there for six months. So I needed to hear from him. And he began to explain to me the reality of the other world. He said, sir, it's more real than this world. He says, world, you need God. He says, sir, once in a while, they prepare people, package them, and they send them into the earth. He said, just the same way you watch television, sir. That is how they sit and they watch people. They watch men. They know men more than they know themselves. They watch them like movies. They know their weaknesses. They know what they like. And when they see them, they watch them. They now know how to prepare people to counter what they like. That is why they enter and they penetrate. Like a movie. So even if there is no hell fire, there is earth fire. So you need God. Now, now the Bible says, and God. So I need you to understand, nobody should lie to you. No one should ever lie to you. Your mind should never suggest to you that outside God, there is help. Outside God, there is hope. Outside God, there is respite. Outside God, there is result. There is nothing outside God. Dependence. Trust. Even if you die. Job 13, 15 said, Yea, even though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I will maintain my own ways before him. There was a lady that was married and she didn't have a child. So she was in church, in church, in church. After about nine years or so, somebody told her, I said, Come, let me talk to you. See. All this church, church, church. Church is good though. But shine your eye. Use your head. It's you. The pastor is married with his family. 
elders, leaders are married with their children. It's you that will lose your hope. Do what your mother is telling you. What was the mother telling her? The mother said, there's a place she has to go and massage. Women know what I'm talking about. They will have to massage her tummy. As they're massaging the tummy, things are going to get fine. So she was going there every Saturday. The mother was in Delta. The mother was sending her money to go there Saturday. Sometimes, before she comes back on Sunday, she has missed service. She was doing that regularly for a long time. One day, a prophetic word came. And the Lord said, don't go this Saturday. Ah, she said she has to go. Don't go this Saturday. She called the mom and said, I was told not to come. The mom yelled, what? You must go. The mother's reaction shocked her. She decided to stay back. She slept. That Saturday, she heard a voice. And the voice that spoke was the voice of her mother. What did the voice say? The voice said, I have put in you a machine that sucks babies. I have put in you a machine that sucks. S-U-C-K-S. Sucks babies. And she opened her eyes. And she began to recollect. It was the voice of her mother. She ran down for prayer. And the word of the Lord came. And we said, you machine that suck babies. There is a machine that suck machine. Its name is Jesus, the son of the living God. Monday, her phone was on fire. Tuesday, her mother was calling. Wednesday, her mother was calling. What happened? From the people that started going on massage, the mother sells what they call, what do you, is it docanots they call these things? What you use in preparing draw soup. Okay. No, there's another name. Docanot is not. Eh? Whatever. You know what I'm talking about. When the mother takes, hold on. When the mother takes five bags to the market, until she finishes selling, nobody will sell. But the very day the daughter stopped going, as the mother takes to the market, nobody will buy. So she was trading with the daughter's womb. I wish I was talking to somebody here. <laughs> Let me give you another one. Someone came from Kuala, Delta. She will get pregnant. She will get pregnant. The, bur- the stomach will come out. She will go into labor, go to the hospital. Boom. She will pass out. She opened her eyes. Where is her baby? There's no baby. Baby is not dead. Baby did not come out. Stomach flat. Doctors examine the womb and say the womb has repelled a baby. But the problem is, where is the baby? Now, it happened once. She got married to somebody else because the man left her and said she was a witch. She went back to Kuala, married somebody else. Got pregnant. Went into labor. It got so bad, she lost that one actually. There was no child. It got so bad, the second one, she decided and felt that because when the thing comes out, she pushed it and she, she goes to sleep. She felt the nurses always take her baby. So this time, they decided to get a matron to do it at home. Mm, push, push, push. She passes out. Matron said, no child came out. The husband left her. The revival was going on in Benin. As was going on in Benin, a brother saw a revelation about her. She's been out of two marriages. And the brother saw her. The Lord said she'll get married. And the brother came, met a few people. See who the Lord is saying I should get married to. They say, eh! She cannot give birth. See, I assume a woman. You don't understand. She can be pregnant. She can't give birth. And the brother asked questions. Spoke to us. One of our senior pastors told him to come. He came. He spoke to me. When he started telling me what the lady had been through, I'm be honest with you. Uh, uh, no, don't laugh. I'm being honest with you. When he was telling me all that has happened to the lady, married twice, out of the marriage, this was his first marriage, I wanted to ask him, say, of all people, honestly, I was about to ask him that, of all people on earth, over 4 billion female species, 
Is he the one that has plenty matters? <laughs> Lots of problems. But he said, God showed him. I said, okay. I said, bring her. As she came and walked in, my eyes were open. And I asked her, who is so and so? Please, mothers, forgive me. I'm not attacking you this morning. Who is so and so? It was the mother. I said, what have you done to the mother? What did you do to your mother? He said, no, nothing. But the mother is concerned. The mother is worried. Of course, those who are fighting you are always the ones that express more worry. They are the ones that express more worries. Tried everything. There are certain people under the sound of my voice today. I'm, I'm serious. Please, I'm serious. This is a very brutal service. Whoever needs to confess and die will confess and die. Whoever needs to confess and aspire, whoever needs to confess and go, whoever needs to confess and be deleted, whoever needs to confess and be exited, that person shall confess and be deleted. Confess and be edited. Confess and be deleted. Somebody shot fire, fire, fire. Somebody shot fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Allah kapurata yata. Allah kapurata yata. Ase pereke tokata. Ase pereke tokata. Ase pereke tokata. I'm not telling you stories of a distant past. I'm telling you stories some of you can relate. Many years ago, what did I say? I was invited to a part of a do state in Owen to minister the word of the Lord. There was no light. There were wires, there were poles, but there was no light. I was invited by a man of God in this town, this same town. His name is Joshua Bakari. He was in the assemblies of God then. We were both invited as guest speakers. And I was invited to minister there. The day I got there, I noticed by 7 p.m., crusade had not started. What was going on? They were moving, they were dialing, they want to connect wire, they want to connect. I told the young man, I carried my Bible, I started carrying speakers on my head. We connected, turned on the gen. I saw, I said, what's going on? No single light. No light there. I said, what is the problem? They said, we have transformer. But some people are holding the current. Hold on, follow me. Whatever I'm telling you is a true life story. What is the name of this town? They said, if you go. If you go, Miss Children of Vulture. If you go. In our. We changed the name, I'll tell you. And I said to them. I said, if you are around Uzeba era, you should know what I'm saying. I was there that day and I said to them, I was ministering. It was December 23rd. I said to them, I said, Christmas day, there will be light. So that 23rd, people didn't come much. And I said, if you tell people to be here tomorrow, 24th, Christmas day, there will be light. The next day, every year was crowded. As I was preaching, they were looking at me. Looking at their watch. And the man who invited me, I heard, I heard he lost his wife now, is from is a lecturer in our chief police called Amos Abohi. I didn't mention the name for my own. Oh. Make you go, make you go ask question. The man said to me, Why did you give that? You would have allowed us to leave town. I said, but that's what God told me. He said, I know, but sometimes God can talk in parable. I said, this one is no parable. 24th, that was the morning, 24th afternoon, I called some young men to get me this coal iron. You know coal iron? Coal iron. You put, um, yeah, to iron my clothes. And while one of them was bringing it, I saw two of them pointing at me. So I asked him, I said, what are they saying? He said, they said that they are waiting. That if light doesn't come, they will beat you. (laughs) 
the one said he has never attended crusade in his life this is the first time if this man make us to be coming say we should be coming if we want light and there's no light the exit back to our chi is just one route there's no escape route it's one route so there's no way you can exit and the lord said to me on the 24th after i administered i said by this time tomorrow there will be lights i finished the crusade some minutes past 10 and the lord said do a jericho match hold on don't laugh i was doing jericho match some minutes past 10 i didn't know people were following me what i was doing was jericho match i wasn't running i was just speaking in tongues speaking in tongues i noticed some people i was hearing steps with touch light so i turned to the pastor see what's happening he said they are following you they think you want to run he said they have been around the house they are watching so i was doing jericho match i could not finish my jericho match because when i saw the number increasing number of boys increasing i had to just turn back faith is a risk <laughs> Some minutes past 11. You know, like when Satan took Jesus around the whole world in a moment of time. I remembered everything about my life, my mother, my father, everybody in a moment of time. So I lay on that bed. I said, Lord, I know your voice. Whatever happens, it happens. I lay on the bed. I was ready for anything. I put my bag in the corner. Whatever they want to do to me in the morning, Satan was saying, You must you give that. You know, the devil started giving you all the scriptures, zeal without knowledge. All everything was flashing. I was thinking, Will my father cry? Will my mother cry? Will they cry? If they hear that this has happened to me. I slept very late. So normally I wake up by one, but this time I didn't wake up till like two, three. What woke me up? It was the pastor. Bang, 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 bang the door. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, 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 on Christmas Day. Bang, 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 bang. So I yawned and I opened the door. He carried me up and began to turn. I said, What? He said, There is light. There is light. There is light. Guess what? This time around, I came out. I never brought you. I came, I was walking around the town. Rabagaya. All the boys, guess what? They ran carried me on their head and they began to jubilate but some of them started drinking stout drinking <laughs> they were <laughs> opening bottles of alcohol that by that night of the crusade the whole place was jammed while i was walking in everyone was shouting as i mount the stage they were shouting i started waving them like my fellow countrymen i was waving them like a president <laughs> i was waving them like my fellow nigerians i had a voice i am speaking to your life by the power of the holy ghost everything that has held you bound i break it in the name of jesus listen we turn the name of that city to Ogbagoke. If you go through Zeba, you'll see the sandboard. Welcome to Ogbagoke. We named it. I said, what do you call children on the mountain? What do you call children on the hill? No more children of vulture. What do you call children on the hill in your dialect? And they told me, Ogbago. Okay. I said, okay. Give it that name. Children on the mountain. Not, not children of the vulture. Amasa Katea. Ekopa Lada. Zekete Kala. Only God can do it. Then the, the, the power holding brought the light. It was called Nepa at that time. They brought the light. They brought the transformer. They brought the wire. I'm telling you true life story. They brought everything. Yet light never came. Witchcraft held the light. But only God can do it. Only God can embarrass the devil. Only God can prove himself out. Only God can do what man cannot do. I am speaking for you today. As you hear the sound of my voice. With man, it is impossible. But with God, all things. Take your seat. Any suggestion that takes you outside God is satanic intention 
for affliction extension. Any suggestion that takes you outside God is satanic intention for affliction extension. The devil wants an extension of affliction. He wants your problems to continue, your battles to be prolonged. It was an extension of that limitation and affliction. So what the devil does is to bring a suggestion that takes you outside of God. Where do I start from? Too many true life stories. Where do I start from? Outside of God. Even if dependence on God seems temporary and profitable, it is internally rewarding. Even if dependence on God seems temporarily unprofitable, it's internally rewarded. And God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. The first key to a mighty turn around, the first trigger, never be offended in God. The second trigger, you must know only God can do it. Number three, you must understand the power of intercession intercession we live in a self-centered generation a, a selfish generation a selfish group of believers selfish Isaiah 59 16 he said look for an intercessor I didn't find one his own hand I saw there was no man and wondered and there was no intercessor therefore his harm brought salvation unto him. His righteousness is sustained him. When God was speaking, today, there's a popular verse of scripture. Now, Ezekiel 22, verse 30, I sought for a man, I sought for a man, I sought for a man. That scripture is only for an intercessor. I sought for a man who could stand in the gap. There are many prayer warriors, but there are few intercessors. There was uh, 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 some, some years ago we had a, a, a prayer leader, a prayer squad leader in church here. I removed him because I attended two of their prayer services. Vigil. Self-centered. Self-centered. A prayer squad is an intercessory group. They pray less for themselves, more for others. But that prayer squad was more for themselves. As we are here now, as our faces are different, so our problems are different. We will pray, I will not call to the prayer meeting, I go at it. Prayer. I was there. I said, okay, it will soon change the prayer. He continued again. There are people, our means who are sick. They are going to be here today. Prayer. We started from 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. Some needs to 3. Let's begin to thank God. Let's begin to thank God. Let's begin to thank God. Let's begin. Eh? So I came out and I said, what have you done? This group is to pray for the church. This group is to pray for the believers. This group is to pray for those who are here, members here and they are sleeping at this time or they are going through battles at this time. Successful men are selfless men. Selfless is success. You can't see success until you are selfless. See a man like Abraham. What did God see in Abraham? We see the selflessness in Abraham. How can I bring Lot? Lot was a tag along. He tagged along. And when there was a conflict between the headsmen of Abraham and the headsmen of Lot, Abraham said, pick anywhere. That's selflessness. And Saul saw, Lot saw a well-watered plain field. He saw the plantations, very green. <laughs> Not knowing that Sodom is attractive. Gomorrah is attractive. Sodom never appears like Sodom. Sodom appears like plantations. Sodom appears enticing. 
And the Bible says, Lot made a choice. And yet he interceded for Lord and said to, to, to the Lord, if you find 40 men, if you find 30 men, look at a man like Nehemiah. Nehemiah was sustained there as a bartender when they brought a message to him that the wall had been pulled down. The walls had been broken down. It was not his father's wall. It was not the wall that connected to his direct hometown. It was the wall of Jerusalem. But he carried that burden. It was a common information, but he received it uncommonly and began to run. Men who do uncommon things are men who receive common information in an uncommon manner. Men who do uncommon things are men who receive common information in an uncommon manner. And Nehemiah said, no, these walls, he wept. He fasted. He prayed. He said, these walls must be rebuilt. Child of God, time will fail me to tell about David. How did David encounter Goliath? The Bible said the father sent him to go check the welfare of his brothers. As he went there, he saw a man, an uncircumcised Philistine, who was defying the armies of God. It was not about him. It was about the armies of the living God. His concern was about the armies of the living God. What about Job that we are considering? How did Job get the news of his mishap? He was just coming out of the temple where he had gone to sacrifice for his children. So Successful men are selfless men. It's time for us to understand the power of intercession. Anytime you are believing God for something to happen for you, pray for it to happen to somebody else. A great man said, what you make happen for others is what God makes happen for you. Are you believing God for a child? Pray for a child for somebody. Are you believing God for financial breakthrough? Pray for financial breakthrough for somebody. Are you believing God for marital stability? Pray for marital stability for somebody. Are you believing God for a visa? Pray for someone to get a visa. Are you believing God for longevity? Pray for someone to get long life. What you make happen for others. God makes happen for you. We are in a generation where God is raising intercessors who are saying to God, I don't care what I don't have. I want you to do that for someone else who are saying, Lord, I may not have money. I may not have contact, but I want a revival in the body of Christ. I want an empowerment in my generation. I am living with my generation in mind, not for myself, but for my generation. Lift up your eyes and shout hallelujah. Intercessors. The Bible says after he prayed. Can I say this to you? Can I say this to you? It is illogical to live an intercessory life. It's illogical. How can Job, who is going through problem, he has not prayed for himself. He is praying for his friends. That's why I say it is illogical. It is senseless. It is mental cerebral palsy. It is mental, mental leukemia. For you to be praying for somebody over a problem that you are going through. But the spiritual equation is that that is the easiest way to come out of your own problem. That's the spiritual equation. The easiest way to come out of your own problem is to start interceding for somebody who has that problem. It is illogical that a Job is sick and is now praying for his friends that are well. A Job is stranded. A Job is immobile. Is now praying for people that I'm... It is illogical. It is illogical for me to give when I need. That's not a principle. The principle of financial empowerment or financial growth does not permit you to sow seeds. The principle of financial growth tells you to gather. The principle of the world tells you that to prosper you must gather. But the principle of God's word tells you to prosper you must scatter. Does it make sense? Check out the financial laws. They are anti-scripture. Financial law tells you that you should wait for when, when you discover the climate is okay before you invest. 
but scripture tells you when things are terrible and dangerous, drop your seed. Is it logical? Nobody follows God. Most people today who are believers, who are stranded, are believers who are trying to follow God on the platform of logic. Am I communicating? Sometimes, one time, one time, we are giving our first fruit as a church. It was a lot. I added my own personal first fruits. As I was taking to go and give my father in the Lord, I was saying, hey, 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 all this money for one man. The devil said, ah, my own was huge. Church own was okay. It's one person. And the devil said, why not you give him the tithe of it? And I said, no, first fruit is first fruit. This was the Lord. When you allow the devil to walk with you, with your mind, and you become logical. There are people now the devil tells them to be smart. The first fruit. You know, when it comes to obedience, so people become rational. They try to start ra rationalizing it. When it comes to collecting miracles from God, they are not rational. They want everything. When it comes to tight, you see debate. I've never seen anybody debate blessing. See, I have a question. See what's it? Okay. So my question is that, must God bless me? Must, God, must, I, must I be the best and the biggest in my hometown? No. When it comes to tight, it comes to first fruit, you see debate. We want Abraham's blessing, but we cannot do Abraham's duties. The right song should be Abraham duties are mine. Abraham duties are mine. I will do it in the morning. I will do it in the evening. Abraham duties are mine. But no, it's Abraham blessings are mine. You are collecting the blessing without the duties. Abraham was a sacrificial, selfless. And after God brought the child, God said, carry your son. Your only son. And drop him. That's, that's, you cannot be intercessory until you are selfless. Your only son. And sacrifice him on Mount Moriah. It's time for us to begin to consider others. There are people in your family that are not saved. There are people in your family that don't know God. And you are not concerned at all. What do you know the mockery, the insult it is? That you are a believer, your blood brother, your blood sister, your uncle is a herbalist. It's a mockery on your redemption. You are on your way to church now, and after service today, in the evening, your younger brother or sister is on her way to club. You are not bothered at all. Now, everybody in anger in life, anything else you want to do with your life, I don't know. You want to go air fire? Satan open the road. Wow. For those that want you, you know, there are there are things that, that you see believers take for granted. Am I communicating here? You must be selfless, you must be intercessory. The friends of Job, the judgmental. <laughs> Hear me. I want to say something. Anyone going through trials. And maintains a stand generates an uncommon anointing. Anyone going through trials and yet maintains a stand generates an uncommon anointing. Anyone who has been through something and came out of it, please let him pray for you. There's an uncommon anointing that rests on overcomers. There's an uncommon unction that overcomes command. There is an un unparalleled grace that overcomes provoke. Mm. God takes men through problems so he can tie the solutions of those problems to them. God takes men through battles so he can tie the solutions to them. God takes men through confusions. Prayer is more potent when it is selfless. Prayer is more potent when it is selfless. Prayer <laughs> has more capacity to produce when it is intercessory. Hear me, child of God. 
it is time for us to become passionate i was reading god's generals and some of the men who have lived on the sands of times who walked in a level of power i discovered the life they lived was selfless life they never did anything for themselves they did it for their generation and for god is it men who ended in the dimension of preaching the gospel and ministry they were men who were passionate for god they were men who were crazy to be a blessing to god blessing to their generation affect their world when they minister the gospel they minister with the mentality of somebody must be saved when they were singers they came up with hymns to bless the god the, the gospel to bless you know the world to bless the church to bless the kingdom they were not all about becoming stars and artists no they were about blessing their generation when it was people who were workers in the church they didn't seek to be recognized they were interested great servant of god pastor kumuyu was preaching one day and the paper fell and one of the protocols standing picked it and gave to him and he asked them said do you know that man is he said no i didn't mention his name a seven military general a seven military general was, was the one standing a seven military general and you you are a lance corporal you are rousing us we can't tell you where to park your car we can't tell you where to park your car you have brought your defense academy to church. Park it. Do you know where I am? Park it. Do you know where I am? Park it. Do you know where I am? Do you know where I am? Do you know where I am? No, we don't know who you are. Do you know where I am? That's a mental problem. If you're asking us who you are, you're already sick. Do you know where I am? No, sir, we don't know. Do you know where I am? No, sir, we don't know. Do you know where I am? Go to a psychiatric home. Let them tell you who you are. How can somebody not know who he is? You're asking us who you are. You should tell us who you are. Those are selfless men. No wonder they, they got such acceleration. There was a man, his duty, his duty, his assignment every Sunday is to charge up the pastor. When the pastor comes to church, he goes to his office. Ah, daddy, good morning. You are a great man. You are a gift to our generation. You are a blessing to us. Lives have been changed through you. Thank you for answering the call of God. Thank you for saying yes to God. Thank you. That's what he does every Sunday. The pastor said, Amen, Amen, Amen. He says that. I one time the pastor was asked, Who is this man? He said, The pastor said, He's the owner of the biggest commercial bank in their city. The, big, the biggest commercial bank, his own was to encourage the pastor for answering the call of God. No wonder they saw such acceleration, their selflessness. One of the biggest men aside Mensa Musa, who is the aside King Solomon. Mensa Musa is the next man from Mali, who is the wealthiest man that ever lived. The third man after Mensa Musa is John Rockefeller. John Rockefeller was such a blessed guy, but he was selfless. Selfless. John Rockefeller has a Rockefeller Foundation today. All his grandchildren, great grandchildren, are still enjoying from his wealth. And he has long passed away. Blessed! But he was selfless. There was a city, all the churches in that city suddenly got transformed. Suddenly got blessed. And he was asking the pastors, what happened there everywhere now? The churches everywhere now has received light. Has received light. He said, John Rockefeller passed through this town. He was going so he just passed through and he stopped and said he should gather all the pastors. And bless them and told them nobody, not one single person, should put his name anywhere, should give any credit to him, selfless. One chair. That's Rockefeller. One chair you brought for church. You bought one chair, one chair for church. Your anger is that I have not mentioned your name. For one week, you come to church, you are still waiting. Papa will soon talk. 
They should not they acknowledge people that are supporting. What is going on here, yes, Jeff? There are people that are selfless. Selfless. That is what we need. It's time for us to get to that point in our walk with God where we are not asked, this year, be a selfless person. Be a selfless person. We, we are in a generation that, that we, we, we are too conscious of ourselves. And I'm telling you the truth. Nasty generation. Nasty. Somebody is brushing her mouth and she's filming it. Somebody is sitting down eating and there's a camera on the food. I'm here preparing pizza. Who is interested? Oh, no. It's very self. People are in church. Church. And they carry a camera. My helper, there is something that makes my helper. Oh, glory. Am I real? When you do that, you have stopped. You are not worshipping God. There is something that makes me come into your... Hey! Hey! This is our church. That is our pastor. That is the altar. <laughs> Can you see yourself? You have... You have you have exposed your church. That's the pastor. That's the pastor's wife. <laughs> Those are the elders. Hey, my Eva. And when I when I stumble into things like that, I say, What have we what have we turned into? What has this generation turned into? In the past. For you to get somebody an attack, you have to go to a strong DBA. That have to trace the person's location, trace the person's where about. These days you don't need DBA. From their from their action, you know where they are traveling to next. You know where they are coming from. You know their next plan. We like ourselves so much. So much. There are people that have left this church because they say I did not ordain them. There are some that will not make dickiness and dickens with their wicked hearts. They still wanted oil on their head. Dicking winch. Am I communicating here? Wherever you are seated or standing, whatever you are doing, sitting, standing, can you lift your two hands to heaven and say, Lord, help me to be selfless. John chapter 3 verse 30. It must increase. I, I must decrease. John said, I must decrease. I don't want anybody to know or see me. I want God. I'll never forget how God humiliated me in Ghana. My second time of ever preaching in Ghana. Oh Lord. They brought a lot of sick people. They brought so many sick people. People believing God for miracles. And the guy who introduced me on the altar started. This man of God. I was in his program. In so so place. The blind saw. I was in his program. The lame walk. He's a custodian of miracles. He's a carrier of miracles. He said so many things. I was just there. I was just saying, I give God the glory. What stupid, give God the glory. What stopped you from standing to stop him? I was there. He was saying all kinds of things. More than 10 minutes, he was still talking about me. He said, you are going to see what will happen today. This man, I was in a crusade, so-so place. When he ministered, what I saw, he said the Lord. When I came, I took the mic. I was trying to worship God. Every year was dry and empty. I saw Holy Spirit move. The Holy Spirit said, you move. <laughs> Holy Spirit move. He said, you move. You are the one they talked about, so move. 
that night I have never seen such a dry atmosphere. I struggled to preach. Struggled to pray. And yet I prepared to come there. And I could see people putting their head down in disappointment. No single healing. Not one. We're looking. I thought they said the man is anointed. And I left that service. I went. You know the kind of service where the drivers and the protocol carry you in the car. They don't see anything until you get to. <laughs> they don't see anything. Everybody just quiet. Just get there. And you yourself, you are quiet because you know. You know what, you know what happened. I got there. I went on my face before the Lord. I said, Lord, what happened? He said, they say you are a custodian of miracle. So I allowed you manifest the miracle. And I left that altar in pain. When I finished worshiping God in the morning, it was the time for us to minister. I got to the place. Unfortunately, I saw the pastor again standing. I said, hey! Hey! The man of God is here. I carry my Bible. I said, hey, hey, hey. It's okay. So let's worship the Lord. I felt the anointing. I feel the presence of God. The whole place went wild. God was doing great and mighty things. But the night we had overflows. Why? It's about him. Do you know one of these years we to be rich? Very easy to be rich. You can sow seed from now till next year and still be poor. Pastors won't tell you this, but I'll tell you. You can sow seed from now till next year and still be poor. It is priority that determines prosperity. When you now say, Lord, you have sown your seed, you now say, Lord, bless me for your kingdom's sake. I want to build churches. I want to take care of orphans. I want to take care of widows. I want to sponsor crusades, Lord. That's why I need this blessing. And when God, when you become God's treasurer, God maintains you also. As you are a blessing to his work, it gives you money to maintain yourself. Lord, I want to be a blessing to communities. I want to be a blessing to my generation. I want to live a selfless life. The work of God must not suffer in my time. That's the life. That is why I need blessing, Lord. That's why I need you to bless me. Not because I want to make a name. And the sad thing is that that's not the generation we are seeing now. More than half of the people here today are about themselves. Themselves. Let me raise a prayer now. Let's pray for those outside the world, in the world. Let's pray for those who are going through pains. Our volumes will dwindle. But when it's about us, it's time. There are people who are lying in an hospital bed. One leg is kept somewhere. Another hand is kept somewhere. Doctors have given up. All they need to get well is the prayer of a saint. But that passion has not entered into you yet. There's somebody roaming the streets. Before they released them into the street, they tried drugs. They tried rehabilitation. They tried every single experiment for his health. He was not recovered. And they released him to the street. All he's waiting for is the prayer. There's a woman, the doctor has said, medically she's okay. Husband, medically is okay. But no child. Because it is waiting for an intercessor. Who will make the who will carry that woman as a burden and make declaration? But our minds are not connected to such. All we think of is ourselves. All we think of is what we want. All we think of is what we are looking for. It's time for us to become intercessors. 
to be selfless. To be selfless. I will never forget one of the miracles that moved tears in my eyes in Abiyakuta many years ago. There was a man on a wheelchair. The man couldn't walk. I walked towards there, I was praying, and there was a woman who was standing who came with his wife that wheeled him there. While I was praying for people, he was doing me like that, pointing to the woman. He was on a wheelchair, pointing to the woman. So I moved close. I said, What's the matter? He said, Please, this is over 10 years. She doesn't have a child. Please, sir. Please, sir. Pray for her. Please, sir. Please, sir. He was on a wheelchair. I said, What about you? He said, No, sir. Not me. Not me. Ha, ha, ha. Please, sir. Please, sir. She's my wife's sister. Please, sir. The husband wants to send her away. Please, sir. Tears ran down my eyes. I said, what about you? He said, sir, no, not me, ha. Huh? I said, I know. What about you? He said, yeah, had an accident. And from his waist down, he can't feel himself. He said, but I shouldn't worry. But this woman, he, does, he was crying. He doesn't want her to lose her marriage. Please, something came on me. In compassion, I grabbed him. As I was praying for him, he was looking at me and looking at the woman. He was telling the woman to hold me. The woman should hold me. The woman should hold me. I told the lady, I said, hold on. I grabbed him. And I began to pray in tears. Pushed the wheelchair. He fell down. Picked him up. He fell down. Picked him up the second time. He stood. And I said, walk. When he began to walk, listen. He began to walk. He turned to her. He said, I said, I said what kind of person? That's selfless. In other words, even if it doesn't happen for me, this person, when he said he was moved with compassion do not seek the gift of healing seek compassion gift of healing will come what is compassion compassion means a man coming with passion compassion coming with passion can i say this to you? there are people in your village that are down all they are waiting is for you to be passionate for their welfare you may not have the money but have the plan you may not have the money now have the idea have the dream the lord i need a blessing that is beyond human comprehension because somebody where i come from needs to know that jesus is real that's missing the church i want to pray for you it's missing in the body of christ that's missing i me myself i me myself i me myself a selfless man considers others before himself considers 